Hey everybody, it is really me and I am here with an amazing guest today. It has been a hot minute since I have filmed episode or podcast, but you know what? This month is a month that deserves me to break my silence. It is Suicide Awareness Month. And on top of that, we're going to be talking about mental health, especially in the teen pocket. And with me today, I have an incredible guest. Her name is Sheree. And not only does she keep my skin looking amazing with her mad magical skills uh, and aesthetic products, but she is also no stranger to a hard life. So uh, Sheree, go ahead and give us a little blurb about what you do now and about your family. Okay, I live here in Northern Utah. I have two sons at home. I have one son in heaven. Um, my sons right now are 15 and 17, would be 19, turning 20 just around Thanksgiving this year. So I do aesthetics. Um, I have a, a just a fun little studio in my house. This is where I got to know Kamel and um, just try and you know, make a difference, meet as many people as I can and get to know their story. And um, I was born and raised in small Southern Utah. And um, this has been a big change for us to be up here. Coming to the big city. Coming to the big city. <laughs> but so far, so good. And, and it's, yeah. Awesome. Every day is an adventure. <laughs> I love that. And so you glossed over um, an introduction on your kids. You were saying you had one in heaven. It, it, for those of you who've watched and listened to my episodes, you know that um, my spouse passed from cancer and my three kids, who that is their parent, um, is in heaven as well. Um so can you tell us a little bit about um, your loss and how yeah. and unfortunate that you are a member of the Suicide Awareness Club? Yeah. So my son, Race, um, he was just 15, 15 and a half, mm. and he was my tall, rowdy, darling cowboy, just full of life, full of, advent, full of adventure. Um and he had he had a lot on him that that nobody knew nobody nobody knew that he was struggling with what he was struggling with um he was very fun loving you know and um no signs of like depression or wow. anxiety you know that that we talk about now it's more acceptable to talk about not being okay you know, but he, even from four years, don't you think like pre COVID, it w wasn't as talked about, but then yeah. after COVID, it seems more acceptable and comfortable to yeah. have people be able to talk about mm -hmm. mental health. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but for him, I think he had some anger issues, you know, I looking back, I can even see from being really little, he would kind of have blow ups and not really know how to calm himself down. And it took some time. Um, mm -hmm. And so, you know, in retrospect, I wish that I would have, you know, maybe helped him get get the help that he needed to work on his temper. Uh, um, so, uh, we're doing this episode not just to get our stories out, but also to help those that are listening. Right. So, I really loved that you said, looking back, you mm -hmm. wish you would have done this. So, if someone is listening and they're child um, or teenager or young adult or themselves are dealing with maybe anger management, would you classify yeah, that? Absolutely. Or not knowing yeah. how to work through like really heavy, well, hard I, emotions. Can you I tell us too, how you with, do that? With mental health and, and suicide awareness and stuff, we don't talk a lot about anger mm. and how the anger is really a problem, especially in young males because studies show that they're very impulsive they are very impulsive that's true you know? and if so you have a young male in your life <laughs> you know sometimes they yeah they don't think things through especially when they're right upset and and it just so happened that all things aligned you know he had access to to a gun at that moment he was completely by himself in that moment mm -hmm. um you know he didn't if you know, I think even if he would have had his, his dog with him or he, he needed to take 10 minutes to, mm -hmm. 
you know, go find the weapon or whatever, I think, you know, would that have changed the outcome? And you can't beat yourself up over shoulda, what woulda, coulda, yeah. all of that. The, the only thing you can do is learn and grow and share, you know, to try and maybe help somebody else. Um, and I applaud you and your courage to be vulnerable and to share uh, your story because it's not easy. But I feel in sharing it and from my perspective, it helps their life have purpose, continue to have purpose. Absolutely. And mine. Mm. You can go into I a really that. dark place after things like that. You know, I've had divorce. I've had abuse. I've had, mm. you know, death. I, I lost my dad um, at a young age and I found myself getting really bitter, you know, at, at God and at everybody mm. else. I was like, why? Why do I have to go through this? Why me? I'm doing everything that I'm supposed to be doing. Yeah. You know, and it took me a long time to come out of it. And after race, um, my son passed away, I knew I never wanted to be in that dark place again. Mm -hmm. And so every single day, you know, you, I just, you have to have complete mindset of your purpose for that day. I love that. So, and when you said you had to come out of it, what types of things did, did you do or do you currently do to help you come out of that dark, heavy place? Definitely therapy. Okay. Definitely sharing because you feel when you are in a dark place like that, you feel alone. You feel like everything's on you. You're the you're the one suffering. You're the one that is taking the brunt of everything. But when you share, you find out everybody has a story. Mm -hmm. Everybody goes through hard times. It may not be losing a spouse or losing a child, but it's something heavy. Everybody has something. Yeah. So when you're sharing other people are going to open up to and you realize that everybody's going through something wow. and you learn how they're coping and that can help you, you know. So therapy, um, connection. Connection. Because yeah. when you share, you provides connection, wouldn't you say? You, Absolutely. You help. Um, and in your children as well, I know you said in that moment before he hurt himself, uh, you wished he had a dog or a a harder way to get to a weapon because you guys lived and for those of you who might list, be listening and be judging which don't <laughs> but for those of you um, Sheree they were they were in a little small hick town dare I say you know like a, a pod like it's it's where Very she small. her family's from is hours away it's it's uh, when she said cowboy, it's not just an aesthetic. Like, their life was cowboy. Like, yeah. he was trained properly with that. Absolutely. His dad was hunter This safety. was a way like, of life it for, yes. for him and for many, many people. This is a way of life. Mm -hmm. And um, he had that. He, he had a, a gun. Um, he was out in the field changing sprinklers. Um, and a lot of times, you know, they get rodents coming out of the sprinklers, skunks, snakes, yeah. things like that. Um, that are dangerous that are they, dangerous yes. and um yeah he was he was very well trained very well versed in in having a gun being around a gun um I still you know I have a lot of mixed feelings uh -huh. and that's that's a whole other yeah uh, a whole other story but things you know things do happen in in our lives that make us change our way of thinking or evolve that thinking and mm -hmm. um but so that was that that is that is a, the norm for a lot of families who live that lifestyle Absolutely. of being on a farm, um, working the land, having threats that are, yeah, around in nature. So that was something that was talked about and dealt with on a daily basis. A hundred percent. So um, when somebody's going through, like say, like they're child like you said you're dealing with anger management mm -hmm. um what are some signs that you would look at other than you know the normal oh they get so upset and I mean what is that now that you have this cruel gift of 20 hindsight is 2020 yeah. 20, if someone is listening to this what can you say if they might not know they're in a danger zone because that's where you were you, you didn't know yeah yeah, um, you know, small things, small things would, would set him off, you know, 
Um, and maybe things that you thought weren't at that big of a deal. I think I and think, that was the red flag. Or? Yes. Okay. Um, and just how long it would take him to calm down. You know, okay. it would take some time for him to calm down. Um, I remember one time he was a, he was really little. He was probably only like six or seven. And I don't remember what even it was about, but he was so mad and he was in the shower and he was like punching on the shower. And I just was thinking like, what is he doing? You know, he's so upset. And, and I think that's where I, I can look back and think like, maybe he had some, some anger stuff that he needed some help with, you know, mm -hmm. like how we process our anger. Um, so, um, if you could rewind or for those listening, mm -hmm. what would you tell them to do? Or what did you wish you do now? I think I that said everything know. that I could have as a parent. Okay. You know, that's beautiful. That's I amazing. think as a parent, I did everything that, that I In would your have, wheelhouse could have you, done, but maybe that. he needed extra help. But I, again, so for those listening who, mm -hmm. who are maybe identifying with your story going, wow, my, that looks like my child. Yeah. What, what kind of help do you, I would you I recommend would have, for them? I wish I would have reached out to a counselor. Okay. Um, That's a great you know, advice. um, and somebody that, that had ways to, to help him that I didn't, you know, how we process mm -hmm. maybe, um, different kinds of activities that he could have done as an outlet. You know, he did play sports, that. he did play football and stuff. And that was really, that was really good for him. Um, down there, we didn't have, we didn't have access to the things that are available here, mm -hmm. um, like a like a big group of counselors to choose from, like a lot of sporting activities and extracurricular. Ooh. Sorry, guys, we're keeping going. It's not the end. <laughs> um, so you know that was hard too, and also in in that aspect where he was, he was my rough, tough cowboy, mm -hmm. and it's hard for them to ask for help. It can be hard for anybody to ask Absolutely. for help. It's so hard. Mm -hmm. Um, but he had a very mindset of that. He had to be tough. He just had to keep, you know, going. He, he couldn't ha show weakness. And, um, I, I wish as a parent, I would have, um, made sure he knew that showing that did not mm. make him weak. I love that. That asking for help does not make you no. weak. No. It makes you strong. Yeah. It shows your strength and courage, right? When you're vulnerable. Yeah. So if if you're listening and you're having a child that's dealing or exhibiting signs of mental health, a uh, counselor and communication. Yeah. Um, Sheree is incredible and her light and energy and her essence shines. And I know if you um, are hitting this up on my YouTube, you'll agree because she's totally beautiful, but she's beautiful inside and out. And um, laying there getting my face done, you know, you ch chat and connect with people. And um, to me, meeting her, I don't think it's happen happenstance. I don't think it's um, just, oh, cool. I looked, you know, saw it and, and, and walked in and just a coincidence. Like, um, to me, it was just a testament of look at this on the outside. And if you're listening, like she is blonde, she is beautiful. She is tanned. She is flawless. Like you would look at her walking down the street or her Instagram and you'd be like, she's got it all. She's amazing. My life's hard. And why can't I be like her? But the more you know her, the more you're like, I want to be like her because she is so well-rounded and so full of beauty and depth. And that only comes to your heart and your soul when you deal with really hard, heavy things. Yeah. So not only um, people want to be beautiful on the outside, which you help with that in aesthetics, like that's her jam, that's what she does. But she um, speaks to that beauty on the inside. And that's, I think, as a... a a community as a world like what we need to do is focus more on being our true amazing vulnerable selves because that is beautiful it is um when when we work in this industry we can be very in in people's spaces you know really up close and personable and it it's it gives people this kind of this opening to share 
and they are really vulnerable laying there and and I'm you know picking and analyzing every mm -hmm. little thing and um we I, I really connect with a lot of my clients that way and my goal is of course I want to make you look good and feel good but I want you to be confident and happy from the inside out glowing mm. you know and it takes healing it does it takes healing and that's what's unique about you and that I want to sh help convey and share is that going to those places to be vulnerable and connect and share your story when otherwise you think oh I'm not going to share because it's too painful or it's too hard or it makes me look stupid yeah yeah yes the in sharing that it only provides connection but also helps attract the right people in your life and you know god Definitely. is sending i believe god is sending people every day sometimes like yeah. in our life to help us through and if we're not vulnerable and we don't share in those hard moments we miss an opportunity to help others and this is kind of what's brought me like the last year has been really difficult um with my my boys with mental health yeah. you know and it's i'm not they're not a stranger to having hard times with mental health that i mean it'll be eight years next week that their dad passed away wyatt's 12 gunner just turned 17 aniska's 20. i mean they've known sadness and they've known hard yeah it doesn't go away unless you speak to it, unless you go to therapy, unless you work through it. And yeah. that is the part that's so frustrating. You can't run. You can't run away from hard work and trauma that you need to do because yeah, it can't. just boils up and comes back. My 15 year old son, um, man, he's really been through it. Um, so he was 11 when his brother died mm. and then, um, you know, shortly after that came divorce. Um, people grieve in different ways. Absolutely. And, um, you know, everything just kind of came to a head and, and unfortunately that's, that's what happened. Mm -hmm. And then, um, and then we moved. And so he really went through huge loss, life changes, loss, loss yeah. change, you know, and gosh, he's just, he's so strong. He is mm. so strong. Um, but the best thing that, that him and I have going is that we communicate, you know, oh, I'm really honest and open with him. He's really honest and open with me. And I allow him to have those bad days. I think, um, when we have teenagers, they're having those really difficult bad days and it might just be over a math test or a friend that gave them a hard time or they ran the mile in a, you know, a, a bad time and, mm -hmm. and, uh, it affects them and I think that as adults we see a bigger picture you know we've been through more and so we t we kind of like discount That's what true. they're going through and we're like oh you're marginalize gonna it or make you're it smaller gonna look back on that and it's not a big deal and you know just shake it off it's all you know but to them in that moment mm -hmm. it is a big deal and so wow. I think we need to allow them to have those emotions don't try and discount it don't that's try huge and, yeah, that's massive because a lot of times I think as parents we try to oh just tough you know just you know it's not that big of a deal it's yeah. okay yeah but then that help then they're not validated yes exactly and and with um with my son that passed away with race he was he was my farm boy he was a cowboy he was very very hardworking but he was pushed to work that hard too and also as parents I think you know we're like okay well our kids need responsibility. You know, they need responsibility, they need to work, they need to see what it's like to, to earn their way. And so we do put a lot of pressure on them that way. But what's what's too much? Where's their mm. breaking point? You know, I think that you have to have balance in that too, you know. And how, how would, do you find that with your 15-year-old now? That's communication? Oh, communication, but I mean, we're, we're still working on that. He's mm -hmm. at that age, you know, I think he's ready to kind of, you know have the job have the responsibility and things like that um but then also i, I want him to focus on school and i think yeah. it's different with every kid yeah every kid true. needs so true. needs something different and i rely on him so much as a single parent and running my own business and i have a seven-year-old and so 
he helps me so much. I rely on him a lot. I'm like, you you can't get a job. <laughs> that's why you have allowance. Me. I know. That's what I tell my, you know, 17-year-old. It's like, you, this is the only time in your life where your job is being a kid yes. and going to school and being an athlete if yes. you so choose. Yeah. And you'll look back and be like, oh, man, I wish life was that simple. Yeah. I but. hope I praise him enough. Um, I hope he feels appreciated mm-hmm. because I sure do appreciate him. I love so. that. They're sent from heaven too, man. Kids are amazing. Yeah. And so I'm grateful that you, you know, I was getting a facial, <laughs> a hydrofacial. And if, let's <laughs> side note, I'm just going to pitch you <laughs> because I do all the time. If you're in the Salt Lake County and you are hearing this and you're like, dang, I need to self-care myself. Um, Sheree is incredible. Her company is called Love Your Face Aesthetics. Mm-hmm. And you can find her on Instagram. Yeah, Instagram, Facebook, um, website. And what's website, your website? It's loveyourfacestudio.com. Okay. Yep, so if you do want to come meet this incredible woman, get pampered and do some good stuff for your skin and your heart and your soul, you can just check her out. I, I will put in the show notes as well as in the comment box on YouTube. Um, the link to her her info and how to contact her. Uh, but um, one more time, going forward and having hard days, even for yourself. So we have spoke to the kid aspect and teenagers, mental health, get them a therapist, communicate, talk. Um, as a mom and a single mom, which I've been in your spot, like, how do you, what, you know, maybe leave the show with what's like two tips that you would have for someone who's a hustler like you, who's, um, you know, maybe they're a single parent, maybe they're a widower, or maybe they're, they're married and it's just hard. And how, 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 how do they show up and have courage and not get sucked down in that heaviness? You know, what's, what's something you'd say to someone listening that's just like man I'm I'm struggling I think faith is huge Mm. faith um whether that's you know spiritual faith in a higher power but Mm. faith in yourself Mm. that if you keep working you keep doing your best you treat other people the way you would want to be treated um that it's all gonna work out Mm, that's beautiful you know um so having that that faith in yourself truthfully that's um you know uh, I've been through a lot and I mm-hmm. um I'm definitely far from perfect and I know I've wronged people in the past and that sticks you know that sticks with me but I do feel like um in my heart and I'm I'm a good person and I I try to project that onto other people and really help as many people as I can and I think that when you when you are that type of soul Mm. It comes back to you. Amen. Karma. What you put yeah. out, you bring back. Yeah, it comes back to you. So just having faith that if you if you do your best every day, that it'll all work out. And it's okay to ask for help. Mm-hmm. It's okay. That. It's all right to ask for help. Um, or share when you're in that hard spot. Yeah. <clears throat> to even a good friend, having a good friend to do that. That's massive. That's huge. I appreciate you being vulnerable having the courage to share something so um, deep and painful um, that a lot of people just want to move forward and never talk about because it hurts. And I can relate to that in a different way. Um, But that's why we're here. So if you guys are listening, you're going through something hard, um, you've been through something hard, maybe you're hesitating and sharing it because it's hard and painful. Let this be also an inspiration to you to open your mouth and to be vulnerable, to have the courage to share uh, hard things that you're dealing with because in that, um, you're helping others in their life and in their journey. And you'll attract your tribe when you're honest and vulnerable and you let your light shine, whether um, your light is have having to deal with a lot of dark, deep shadow. But I believe that darkness and that deep helps you only shine brighter. Absolutely. So thank you, Sheree. Yeah. Appreciate your thank time. You. We love you. And you guys will love her. Thanks for listening to this episode. Um, and again, we encourage you, if you're dealing with mental health, um, do not delay. Do not push it under a rug. Don't take it. Like, it's, it's possibly just a bad day. 
take it serious because um, it is. And it's, I went with my son to a therapy appointment a couple weeks ago and he said, um, the therapist said to Gunner, um, well, you would, would you look at a diabetic person and say, I'm not going to give you your insulin, you know? And it was just like, cause Gunner's taking medicine, you know, and he's frustrated that he has, he needs that boost of serotonin to help his brain. Right. And his therapist was like, that's, that's it's real it's just as real as insulin to a diabetic and it that just was so massive yeah. like it is real the light bulb comes on yeah. yes it's not just this buck up and be happy you know think positive thoughts you know even though yeah. i love that but when you're in that space it's real and it's true and yeah. you don't take it lightly so we love you guys Leave a comment if you have any. We will peruse those and try to get try to get to them as we can. And thanks for watching. Bye bye. <laughs>